What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I'm going to continue examining 100 years of world championship fights. August 31st, 1936. Cisco Escobar stops Tony Marino, 13 rounds in the Bronx, New York, to win a Bantamweight unification match. The NBA and the New York SAC World Bantamweight Championship belts were on the line. Cisco Escobar was the first Puerto Rican fighter to win a championship. And he would give examples to fighters such as Wilfredo Benitez, Estefan de Jesus, Carlos Sugar de Leon, Miguel Cotto, Felix Tito Trinidad, and Jose Torres, Edwin Ochapo Rosario, Kermit Cintron, and Eric Morrell, John, John Molina, Ozzy Ocasio, Juan Nazario, and Carlos Quintero, Samuel Serrano, Wilfredo Vasquez, Hector Macho Camacho, Carlos Ortiz, and Carlos Santos. Cisco Escobar was so popular and well respected in Puerto Rico that the government was ordered to close the schools and work employment one hour late when he arrived. Phenomenal fighter was Cisco Escobar. Had his wars back and forth with Lou Salica and many, many other great fighters. Cisco Escobar is to your left. And Harry Jaffa is to your right. And these two men would have a will of a contest as they exchange titles. Thursday, September 3rd, 1936. Lou Ambers defeats Tony Canzanieri in 15 rounds to win the vacant World Lightweight Championship belt in New York. Lou Ambers had ran out to the middle of the ring, the third round, and he drops the veteran. By the fifth round, Tony Canzanieri began bleeding. He was bleeding from his nose and he had a swollen eye and Arthur Donovan, who was the referee, decides that the contest would be unjust if he let it continue. But it wound up going 15 rounds because he wanted to make sure that Tony Canzanieri, who had earned all his victories and whatever losses that he would inquire during the course of his career, he did it with dignity and honor. And Lou Ambers was 22 years old. He stood five foot one and a half inches. He was a lightweight and had a 70 inch reach. Walked into the ring with a fighting ring career. Uh, 59 wins, two losses, five draws and 21 knockouts. Tony Canzanieri was 27 years old. He stood five foot four inches. He was a lightweight and had a 67 inch reach. Had a fighting career record coming into that ring. 122 wins, 16 losses, eight draws, and 39 knockouts. Incredible. Tony Canzanieri, I have ranked number nine, along with the Scotch Wap, Johnny Dundee, and Benny Lemon, the Ghetto Wizard. Two fantastic fighters showed up on the night of Thursday, September 3rd. 1936. And I have an undercard for you that was just as fascinating. Now the Bronx Spider, Mike Belois, puts an end. Dave Crawley, nine rounds. New York's Madison Square Garden. The New York recognition of the featherweight New York sack championship belt. Referee was Arthur Donovan. And he stops the contest two minutes and 52 seconds in the ninth round. Dave Crawley was down twice between round eight and nine. Who is Dave Crawley? Was born May 4th, 1910, London, United Kingdom. He died December 11th, 1974. He was a lightweight and had an outstanding career. 180 total bouts, 128 wins, 41 losses, 36 knockouts. Now, what was amazing about Mike Belois Let's learn about Mike Belois. His name was the Bronx Spider. He was born February 18th, 1911, in Bronx, New York. He died June 2nd, 1969, in the Bronx, New York. He stood five foot five inches. He weighed 122 to 132 pounds. He was a featherweight and a lightweight. He was managed by Eddie Walker. And he fought from March 1st, 1932 to August 25th, 1947. January 2nd, 1933, he faced Petey Hayes in New York and Brooklyn and defeated him in eight rounds. November 24th, 1933. Being in the ring with Pete DeGrasse, New York, but defeated him in six rounds. He faced him three times. Pete DeGrasse was some fight. I'm gonna show you Petey Hayes and a few fighters. But he also been in the ring with Edward Whitemeyer, Spider Armstrong, Henry Armstrong, Juan Zarita, 
Baby, Bobby Ruffin, Chester Rico, and Claude Bonner. Lou Feldman, now off. California, Joe Rivers, Jackie Wilson, Al Reed, Maxie Fisher, and Petey Scalzo. Tommy Stenhouse, now Citrino. I'm going to show you some of these fighters right now. All right, so I'm going to show you a few of the opponents that Mike Beloyce was in the ring with. Here you're looking at Petey Scalzo. And I go through their careers as the series goes on. I just want to show you while I'm talking about Mike Beloyce, some of his opponents. Petey Scalzo was, was a very good fighter. Also, he was in the ring with Chester Rico. Another decent fighter was Chester Rico. And once again, we'll go through the careers of these fighters as the series goes on. Also in the ring with Bobby Ruffin. I'll show you Bobby Ruffin. Now, Bobby Ruffin was a very rough and guts fighter. He was in the ring with Bo Jack many times. I just wanted to show you Bobby Ruffin. I was going to show you a few more, but I'll move on with the series. And again, these names will pop back up in their profiles as the series goes on. Bobby Ruffin. September 16, 1936. Benny Lynch knocks out Paul Palmer. Eight rounds, Glasgow, and remains the NBA flyweight champion of the world. Here you have Jackie Brown and Benny Lynch. Benny Lynch is to your left and Jackie Brown is to your right. Benny Lynch would knock out Jackie Brown, who's an outstanding fighter, by the way, of his day, 1933. 